Welcome to Textimation. Joining us once again is Tom Sumner, the president of Yamaha Corporation of America. Thanks for joining us again, Tom. Well, thanks for having us. We're happy to be here. And you've got some cool new stuff, as usual, to talk about with uh, some new instruments arriving, being announced at the NAM show. That's the National Association of Music Merchants. And uh, one of them, a lot of tech in this one, the silent bass, a new, a new silent bass. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is a product that really solves a lot of problems for musicians. If you've ever been on a subway or you've certainly never been on an airplane and seen somebody walk on with a double bass because they're huge. And so that big, huge violin looking thing with four strings, that's a double bass. So many years back, we kind of looked at how do we make life easier for the double bass player? Because even though you have electric basses, you know, there's really a unique sound and a unique feel uh, for the double bass. And so um, we, we basically stripped away everything that wasn't necessary. And um, so you can actually pack it up into a case that's uh, about the size of a snowboard at the end of the day. So you can actually uh, pack it onto a plane. So that's a, that's a big piece. With the new, this new version that we have that we're just releasing at the NAMM show, there are a couple of things that are pretty incredible about it. So when we went back and talked to musicians about it, they said, yeah, you know, this is great. You know, I can use it on gigs and it's great for, you know, carting around the world. Um, and they, but they were really looking for a little bit better sound quality out of it, especially um, if they were in the studio. So we looked at a couple of things and, you know, kind of technology on two kind of fronts. So one front is the actual material and the acoustic technology of it. And then the other is on the electronics. So on the acoustic technology, we actually looked at the wood and we built a cavity into the base. Uh, so there's not much wood on this instrument, um, but we basically built a cavity in there, which actually helped. And we changed the type of wood that was in there to make it sound acoustically really good. And then from the electronic side of things, um, we actually went and we modeled some microphones uh, that are really key um, microphones for upright bass players, which helps in the studio and it actually has turned out to help them live as well. So it's about $15,000 worth of microphones, three separate microphones. So uh, a dynamic microphone, which is not so expensive, uh, but then a very, very high-end tube amp uh, and our tube, excuse me, tube microphone as well. So uh, that, that product uh, now, uh, the folks that have tried it, the professional musicians, you know, basically say this kind of solves everything. So we can use it in the studio uh, and plug it right in. We can use it live and don't have to worry about miking the double bass and it's easier on them because they can, um, you know, really just carry it around with them wherever they go. It's an easy subway uh, instrument. And you call this something like a studio response technology? Got to have a name for it, right? Yeah, we have to have a name for it. And it has to be a three letter acronym for everything too. So it's SRT studio response technology. So that's what's um, uh, built into the bass. Terrific. And this is arriving on the market uh, next month? Yes. You also have some new guitars uh, to announce, the, the NX series. Tell me about that. Yeah, so um, we've uh, been trying to, with, uh, with guitars, to make really good quality, again, for performance guitars. And um, so we've come out with several things over the past several years. Uh, that have been really great for performance, our A-series guitars for steel string guitars. And um, we're really looking at that for nylon string guitars. So these are classical type guitars. And we tried to solve a couple of problems. One is, is that it's not so easy to get a great acoustic type sound uh, in a nylon string guitar. Uh, and the second part of that is that even if you get a great sound, it's really hard to do it at kind of performance level volumes because you end up with a lot of feedback. So uh, we'd worked for many years to develop a technology called Atmospheel, F-E-E-L, Atmospheel. And that is um, a special pickup system that kind of uses a film pickup that gets more of the sound of the top of the guitar and provides a really, really natural sound, but also allows you as a, music, as a musician to play on stage at high volumes. And uh, another thing that was pretty interesting that we looked at with nylon string guitars, and you, know, you might know this, but the nylon string guitars, the traditional classic guitars, have a wider neck. 
So your fingers have to stretch further for it. And there's a reason for that with classical music, you know, you want, you have, you're usually playing a lot of uh, counterpoint and single lines and that kind of stuff. So you want to be able to have that extra spacing, but a lot of the guitarists that are out there today, especially performing guitarists uh, are used to uh, steel string guitars and they're used to electric guitars. So they're used to a much narrower neck. So we actually, in this new series of nylon strings guitars, the NX series guitars, we actually introduced not just a classical width neck, but we introduced a neck that's more the width of an electric guitar or a steel string guitar so that um, the folks that play that instrument are very comfortable just picking it up and being able to play it on stage. And th there are a few different models th that you're coming out with. <laughs> yeah, so they're, um, they're basically three uh, separate models. Uh, there's the, uh, an NX-1, which is sort of the entry-level model, still very beautiful, doesn't include our atmosphere uh, pickup, and then the NX-3 and the NX-5, uh, which have uh, the improved atmosphere pickup, and then the NX-5 actually has a, a European spruce top, which is a very nice-sounding top, and actually all three of the instruments sound very nice acoustically as well as amplified, even though they're really meant to be a performance guitar. Describe for, for people who may not uh, understand it what the differences are uh, with going with nylon strings uh, in, in terms of performance. Sure. So it's, um, it's really a matter of, you know, sort of layering sounds. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of music is about layering guitar sounds. And every guitar, literally every guitar has kind of a different sound to it. So the, you know, so musicians usually have lots of different guitars to try to create lots of different moods and, uh, or even to write music on. So a guitar player might have, you know, 10, 15 guitars and sometimes more if they're a real professional. Uh, but it's really more about creating uh, a feel. And nylon string guitars have more of a mellow sound. The steel strings usually have more of a kind of a metallic sound, sort of a bright sound. So the, uh, you know, from a musician standpoint, you kind of know what kind of mood you're going for. So a nylon string is what you would think of as classical guitar. Um, and then kind of folk music would probably be more your steel string guitar. Terrific. And these are arriving when? Uh, the NX series should be arriving shortly, but not quite yet. So just a couple months. Very soon. And, and finally, uh, something new for in the stage organ space. Tell me what you're doing there. I mean, uh, Yamaha is so well known. You see the name everywhere on stage, on the, on the organs and keyboards. Yeah, yeah so um, we make an awful lot of things with black and white keys, you know, from grand pianos to the things you see on stage. And we're uh, very big, obviously, into digital pianos as well. And what's interesting is the, uh, from the organ standpoint, uh, we haven't had a, you know, what we would call a stage organ in a long time. I think the last one we introduced was in the 1970s. So it's been a long time. So um, from a keyboard player's perspective, you know, you have folks that play piano, and you have folks that play organ and folks that play synthesizer. Uh, but the organ is kind of a different instrument in a couple of different ways um, where the keyboard on an organ actually is set up differently than the keyboard on a piano because organ players tend to, you know, slide up the keyboard and uh, that kind of stuff. So the keys are set up differently. They're more rounded than a piano. If you tried to do that on a piano, you'd probably you know, <laughs> cut your hand or something. So the key, the keyboard is set up differently. And then it's really all about sort of those, you know, holding those long notes. So uh, we took a while to come up with exactly what we wanted to do for a, uh, an organ focused stage keyboard. And um, even having the, the draw bars or the stops uh, built into it, which you have in all the church organs and that kind of stuff that you see. As a matter of fact, and you've probably heard that, uh, that phrase called uh, pulling out all the stops, right? You've probably heard that said before. Yeah, everybody's heard that. And sure. Yeah, and that, that's based on, on organ technology. So, you know, when you pull out all the stops on a big church organ, you're letting all the air go through the pipes and you're getting the maxi maximum volume. So 
that's where that uh, phrase originated from. So with this new key, uh, with this new organ keyboard, the YT61, uh, we made sure that we had the things that the organist wants to find. And we actually worked with working musicians and with you know, church musicians to kind of find out what they wanted. And uh, one of the interesting things was that they all kind of had their own sound in their mind. And it was all kind of based on what they had. So they may have the same organ in their church as another organist has in another church. Um, but because they're made at different times or they're, um, one is aged differently or one is used slightly different material, they all have different sounds. And this organ actually lets these musicians create the sounds that they hear. So uh, we use something called virtual component modeling. Again, we need to have a three-letter acronym. It's VCM, <laughs> which basically means that we take uh, not just the sound and model it, but if there was, you know, if you open up the uh, the guts of kind of any electronic uh, device, you'll see all sorts of stuff. There's transistors, there's integrated circuits, there's resistors and diodes and all this stuff. So as opposed to trying to model the sound, we actually go down to the component level and we'll take that transistor and we'll model that exact transistor. And I've actually talked to some of our engineers in Japan that, that say, oh yeah, well we model this model transistor, but the most popular one is this uh, model transistor, the same model, but it was you know from X and X a year, so we modeled that one. <laughs> so it's pretty crazy. That lets the musicians really get into it and uh, change the sound very dramatically. A lot of dedicated people using a lot of technology and, and, and knowledge to put this all together, sometimes combining with old world materials. Exactly. Yeah. So the, I mean, if you look at some of the classic sounds that you have in the, uh, you know, in the organ space specifically, and you have lots and lots of old church organs. And I, if I remember correctly, the organ is actually the oldest keyboard musical instrument out there. It was like, it dates to pre it's, I think it's ancient Greece that you, we first saw the organ and it was kind of the first, uh, in some ways, they were kind of the first synthesizer because you could really change the sounds. Where with the piano, you couldn't really change the sound. But with the organ, you can actually, even from the early ones, you could you know, change the sound around, even with the early kind of pump organs. Terrific. Uh, Yamaha pulling out all the stops as usual. <laughs> Tom, where's the best place for people to go for more info? You can go to our website, which is usa.yamaha.com. And we will have, uh, during the NAMM show, which kicks off Thursday, January 16th, we will uh, have a special site up there that you can go to to kind of see everything that's happening at the NAMM show from Yamaha. Terrific. Tom Sumner, thank you for taking the time with us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Cooking with the power of the song. Hi, I'm Fred Fishkin, here to tell you about the latest innovation from my friend Patrick Sherwin and his great team at GoSun Stove. The GoSun Fusion has arrived using the company's tried-and-true reflectors and a solar vacuum tube to get you cooking without the mess of charcoal, heavy propane tanks, or smoke. A really bright idea. And with an optional solar panel and battery storage and the ability to plug in at home or on the road, you really can use the GoSun Fusion to cook anytime and anywhere, day or night, rain or shine. I love what Patrick and his team are doing, and so will you. Want to learn more? Head to gosun.co to check out all of the company's products and innovations, and use the code TEXTANATION to save 10%. That's gosun.co. 